Welcome to Math in a Box with Susan Johnson. In this lesson we are going to learn how to solve linear equations. As you can see I have written four equations across the top. The last equation, the fourth one there, we will solve that one in a, another video. Uh, we'll solve that one and some that are even more complicated than it. Now equations are made of uh, two expressions that are equal. and the one on the left I will call the left side and the one on the right I will call it the right side. So you'll hear me say that quite often, left side and right side. You'll also hear me say variable term. We have one variable term that's the negative 2x and you'll also hear me say number term. The number terms we have two of those, the positive 5 and the negative 11. Now when you solve an equation you want to uh, to move the variable terms all to one side and move the number terms to the other side. I usually decide to put my variable terms on the left, the number terms on the right. So that's what we're going to do here. You can do it the other way if you like. Our variable term is already on the left side so that's why I decided to go with the left side for the variable terms. Therefore that means I do not want the positive 5, a number term, on the left side. I need to move it. How do we move things? Use adding or subtracting. Now this 5 is added, so I will subtract. And you'll see why in just a second here. Now, these two expressions are equal, and I have to keep these two expressions equal throughout. If I decide to subtract 5 on the left, I must also subtract 5 on the right side. Now remember the equal marks is where separated. So I have a negative 5 or subtract 5 on the left, I have a subtract 5 on the right side. Now here's where you see what will happen. What is a 5 minus a 5? It's 0. So on the left side now, I have negative 2x plus a 0. The 5 is gone. The number term 5 is no longer on the left side. What is a negative 11? Subtract 5, or a negative 11 and a negative 5 give you negative 16. Now on the left side, if you add 0 to any term, it doesn't change it. You'll still have the same term. So we still have the negative 2x on the left side now. It's all by itself though now. And on the right we have a negative 16. So now we have only one number term and one variable term. Now when you finish with an equation, the last step is always going to be a positive 1 with your variable. That's multiplication, positive 1 times x must equal, and our number over here will be our final answer. Now I mentioned that because as you can see our x term does not have the 1. It has a negative 2. So how do you change that? Well you use division. That's multiplication, and the opposite of multiplication gives you your hint. You will divide by negative 2. But let me show you really why. You see a negative divided by a negative is a positive. What's a 2 divided by a 2? 1. And then we still have our x. So this will, by dividing by negative 2, that will give us the positive 1x that we need at the very end. But of course if I divide on the left with a negative 2, I must divide on the right by a negative 2. Now I'm using the fraction bar here. A fraction bar does mean division. So now on the right side we have negative 16 divided by negative 2. That is an 8. Now this is the solution. A solution is the number that will make our equation that we had at the beginning true. So if I go back up here and I put an 8 here where the 8x, where, excuse me, where the x is, and multiply it by negative 2, that would give me negative 16. Then if I add 5, do I get the negative 11? Sure. Negative 16 plus 5 is a negative 11. So this is the solution for the first equation. x equals 8. Now in this equation you'll notice that we have two variable terms. We also have two number terms. Now I am going to choose again to move my variables to the left side and I'm going to move my number terms to the right side. Now I can do either one of those first. It will not matter. I'm going to choose to 
move my variable term. I'm going to move the 2x. Now that's a positive 2x. I am going to subtract 2x on the right side. You see that will give me a 0 minus 4 over here. I'm going to subtract 2x from the left and I'm going to subtract 2x from the right. The reason I did it though is because of the right side. I want to move the 2x from the right side. So 2x minus 2x on the right gives me a 0. Subtract 4 equals and over here, what, now remember there is a 1 here. What's 1 subtract 2? It's a negative 1 and that's x. And we still have our plus 60 term. Alright, so what we really have now is a negative x plus 60 equals a negative 4. Now we're ready to move the number term, the 60. We need to move the 60 to the right side. That is an added 60, so I will subtract 60. You always want to get the 0 when you're adding and subtracting, so you use the opposite sign. I had a positive 60, so I will subtract 60, and that will give me the 0. So we get a negative 64 on the right side. All right, now we're not quite finished. This is negative x. We always want to know what positive x is, but you can use a little logic here. If a negative x is equal to a negative 64, what do you think a positive x is? Well, a positive x would equal a positive 64. Now that's using logic, and I like to use logic when working with math problems. Now your teacher is probably going to tell you though to divide. If you will divide by a negative 1 here, because that really is a negative 1 sitting beside the x. So if I divide by a negative 1, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 1 divided by 1 of course is 1, and so we have our positive 1x. But if I divide the left side by a negative 1, I must divide the right side by a negative 1. Negative 64 divided by negative 1 is positive 64. There's our solution for the second problem. Alright, let's look at the third equation now. 12 is the left side and the right side is 5y divided by 2 subtract 8. Notice that our variable term is on the right side, so I'm going to leave it there. This time I'm going to move the number terms to the left side. Now on the right side we will leave the variable term, so that means I need to move the negative 8. Now that's a subtracted 8. In order to move it or in order to get our 0, we need to add 8. So on both sides of this equation, the right side and the left side, I will add 8. We will have 20 equals 5y divided by 2 plus 0. But you know by now that we really don't have to write the 0. You can ignore it. So we have 20 equals 5y divided by 2. Now this problem is a bit different. We did not have a 5 divided by 2 on the other problems. So all you really need to know now is how to multiply fractions. And do you know what a reciprocal is? What is the reciprocal of 5 halves? It's 2 fifths. Now why would I want to use a reciprocal? Well remember when you finish with a solving an equation you want to know what a positive 1 y will be. How can I get a 1? That's multiplication of fractions. You can divide out or reduce before you actually multiply. 1 times 1 will give me the 1 y that I want at the end. So we multiplied by 2 fifths on the left side, oh, excuse me, the right side. So I must come over here and do the same thing on the right. Now you may want to put a 1 underneath the 20. Uh, some people like to do that. This is multiplication of fractions. Now how do you multiply? Well you can multiply top times top, bottom times bottom, and then divide. I like to do the division first. So we have 2 times 4, which is 8. So the solution for this equation is y equals 8. The next equation that I have written up here has four terms. There are two 
of variable terms and both of those have fractions. Two methods that are taught of solving that equation. In the next video uh, I will show you how to do that one and some others that are a little more complicated. I hope this has helped. I'm Susan Johnson with MathInABox.com. I answer email at least 350 days out of the year. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.